Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're doing Catching Up with Kakaako. Uh, and we have a special guest, uh, Jane Sugimura, who is an attorney who specializes. She's been specializing in this for huh, huh, 30, 40 years already. In uh, terms of condo governance. Yes, condo government. Governance. Okay. Yes. Condo governance. And so we're going to talk about condo governance in Kakaako Makai and how a project in Kakaako Makai has different and maybe more difficult issues uh, in dealing with the environment there and the uh, requirements uh, for uh, development. Welcome to the show, Jane. Thank you, Jay, for having me. So you've had a lot of experience with water, flooding, inundation <clears throat> around uh, uh, Oahu and other places in the state, uh, coming from uh, flooding from the ocean, sea level rise, uh, and climate change type weather events. Can you talk about it? Well, in 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 Hawaii, in Honolulu, uh, along Ala Moana, for years, the there 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 have been high rise buildings that experience flooding with high tide and king tides, and you know it, it is a problem because you know it, it's not like you know you can move the building. I mean the the ocean is right next you know is just a few hundred yards you know from the building and you can't stop the tides and when the you get high tides or king tides the building floods and you know what that does is you've got sea you know you've got seawater affecting you know the the concrete the pipes underneath and it affects the pipes and you know these buildings are aging and you know that's one of the issues that's one of the challenges that you know all condominiums face. I mean, it it, it 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 affects all the owners. You know, whether you're an owner occupant or an investor owner, because you are charged your assessed maintenance fees. You know, for the care and maintenance of this building, and and with an older building, it costs more money. And you know, with these buildings that you know are close to the ocean, like the built high rises around Ala Moana, which would be Kaka'ako and into Waikiki, um, you know, they have, you know, special challenges because they got to deal with this water problem. And uh, and as the, as the buildings age, you're talking about pipe replacement. And it's not like you have a building that's inland where you can dig into the ground and actually replace the pipe. You know, I'm being told that some of these buildings and, and, and I and I can't remember the building and I don't really want to say the name of the building. But we they they were you know having issues. I mean they're 30, 40 years old. Their pipes are failing, and and we all know. I mean, a long time ago, we all kind of knew that, um, or we all thought that uh, clay pipes lasted seventy five years. And condos have something called uh, reserves. They have to do a reserve study. They have to stock uh, your maintenance fees. In some portion of your maintenance fees is allocated to uh, uh, something called reserves, and each building you know has different reserves depending on the components. In other words, you, every building has repairs that don't happen every year. You don't replace your roof every year. You don't paint your building every year. You don't replace your uh, pool furniture every year, right? So it, the cost of doing that replacement and repair has to be put into uh, a reserve fund. And because you don't spend it every year, uh, you know, it's like out of sight, out of mind. You, you know, people don't pay any attention. And if you don't do that and your roof fails or it's time to paint the building, and painting the building, you know, if you've got like a 30-story building, it's going to cost you a million dollars because you got to fix the spalling before you can paint the building and, you know, all kinds of things like that. And, you know, so, so you know, let's, let's take a, a, the case of the seawater yeah. coming in. And deteriorating the pipes that would be that would be a, a corrosion problem, right? Right, and, 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 and the pipes would the pipes would would fall apart. Um, right, is the is the useful life of the pipe pipes shorter because we're talking about seawater? Yes, and and right now, I mean, last year the legislature had to change the budget and reserve law because the uh, the components that were in the reserve study were based on a twenty year uh, projection, and because you know, pipes are supposed to last 75 years, and now we know they don't even last 40. Now, you know, 
a replacement of pipes should be in the reserves. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, yeah, well, this that, that was never in in the budget. And many buildings, you know, are just starting maybe in the last five or 10 years to put money aside for the pipes. So there's probably, uh, you know, the buildings who are affected who have to replace their pipes, there's probably not enough money in the reserves to pay for it. That means that the owners are going to be specially assessed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, you know, so, you know, and, and everybody knows, anybody who lives in a condo, I mean, that's like, you know, that's like the worst thing that can happen because, you know, with maintenance fees, at least you know how much you're going to be, is going to be taken out every month. A special, a special assessment, assessment is a surprise. Is a surprise. And it could be very expensive if you're talking about a, a systemic replacement. But let me right. add one more factor. You know, everybody knows that uh, the Kaka'ako Makai is built on um, landfill. That is garbage. Yes. Uh, and, and, uh, and sewage. And um, it has toxins. There are toxins in the land. So let me add the factor. Um, that some of this corrosion from the seawater may be also corrosion from the toxins that is already in the land, from the landfill. Um, how does that change the calculus you just described? Well, I think that, you know, makes it even, you know, uh, I'm not an expert, but I think that, you know, it makes it even more complicated because that means you've got more factors uh, affecting the building, the concrete and the pipes. And does that mean that it's going to deteriorate faster? And, you know, the problem is, and, and you know, this one building that I'm going to talk about, they had to replace their pipes. But because of the under, you know, the water from the ocean coming in and flooding the building, it's not like they could dig into the ground and actually go in underneath the building and replace the pipes. They can't do that. You know, you can't because you're dealing with seawater, right? You have to, uh, so what they, do in that situation is they put a bladder is let's say a pipe is cracked and under ordinary circumstances you would just send you know you would dig into the ground you would remove that section of pipe and you would replace it with a new piece of pipe but you can't do that with these buildings you know that are you know affected by this water so what they do in that case and i was talking to you know one of the uh engineers who was involved in this because i it, it was something i had never heard of they take a bladder and the bladder has an adhesive around it and they they insert that into the pipe and they have to do it at low tide right because there cannot be any water anywhere so they wait till low tide they insert the bladder and then they inflate it and then the adhesive then sticks to the outside inside of the pipe and that's how they fix it but you know my question is how long does that last and well, how long does it take if you can only work uh, at low tide? How I'm told long, that how long does it take I'm told to do they it? can do it. I mean, but but it, it it means that they not, they have to wait for low tide. They insert it and they kind of wait, and then they have to inflate it. It would then supposedly adhere to the inside of the pipe, yeah. and therefore that thereby uh, fix the crack. So you're saying the fix isn't necessarily going to last a long time. Well, we don't know. I mean, they say, well, you know, with this, you know, uh, technology, with this, you know, but you know, because it's new, we don't know how long. It, and 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 in the end, we know that the outside pipe, right, is still there. We know it's crumbling. We know it's cracked. And what happens if it deteriorates? And you have this adhesive that's stuck to the inside of the pipe. I mean, it's almost like you know, if if the exterior of the pipe deteriorates. How good is that lining, going, that bladder going to be? To uh, it doesn't sound like a, a a good fix because the corrosion is going to be happening to this pipe where it touches the water, right? And the water is coming on the outside, so you have corrosion on both sides, right? Uh, inside and outside, and uh, gee, now um, are you, you know, you must deal with the fixes, right? And and the, well, I don't deal with the fixes. I deal with people who have to deal with the fixes. Got and, it. But and and the problem is there technology out there in Hawaii today uh, that could uh, remediate and ameliorate this problem, or is it kind of uh, where these buildings wind up trying something, but it's entirely experimental and they have in, not have a, a high level of confidence that it will work? Is there uh, technology 
that I we can rely well, on? They, they, they assured me that this bladder technology, you know, kind of works. And then I was told that they were they were talking about, you know, for future buildings, they would build the building with a membrane underneath the building. You know, it would the membrane would be underneath the building and then the pipes would be inside the membrane. But then if you've got water, it means how do you go down and fix these pipes? You know, um, how I'm, I don't you're know. Asking me, I'll ask you. How? Yeah, I, I don't know how. And they 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 weren't able to explain it in a way that I understood it, uh, you know, and I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm pretty intelligent, but, you know, I'm not, you know. No, but you've been around this subject for a long, long time. Right. And, and, you know, it, it seems very complicated and, you know, and. Um, and it hasn't and, been done yet. Well, th they are working on this, you know, and, and, but to me, you know, this is, this is a concern, at least, you know, as far as managing the building and marketing the building. Because, you know, um, when you sell a condo, and I would think even with the new developers, they need to make disclosures, you know, in the public report. And it's no secret that the buildings along Haka'ako have water problems caused because they're close to the ocean. And the water, I mean, the, the tides come in and they go into the, you know, they flood the building. And it's been going on for years. So if and I buy, a newly developed uh, multi-million dollar condo along the shoreline, beautiful vistas and everything, beautiful, pristine location for millions, millions. That would, you know, Hemeter was trying to develop Aloha Tower at one point. And he was talking about condos there on the water uh, facing the harbor for $5 million. Um, so this is a high priced neighborhood. But what, what happens then is, you know, you have to disclose the problem. Um, that is going to happen, pretty much going to happen uh, with the uh, infusion of the water and the corrosion of, of the pipes and the need to fix the pipes inside and out. It, it's a sort of surprise assessment, and it could happen multiple times, even 20 years at a time or even more frequently. Right. So how and does that affect the marketability of the condo? It depends on you know, how they make their disclosures. And you know, for the people who buy early, I think you know, it's not going to make, you know, that much of a difference, especially if they, they feel that, you know, within, you know, less than five years, they're going to just, you know, flip it and sell it. It's the people down the down road, you know, after the building's been sitting for 10, 15, 20 years, and they're going to be paying the cost of maintenance. And, and, and hopefully by then there will be techno improvement in technology uh, that can address these problems. But right now, to me, you know, I, I would be concerned. I wouldn't want to, you know, buy a unit and, and you know, for long-term purposes, you know, uh, in that area because there are going to be, you know, problems down the road. I wouldn't want to know. How are you going to be dealing with the water intrusion problem because you're so close to the ocean and high tides and king tides and, and the buildings already there are experiencing it? What's to say that the, the new building isn't going to experience the oh, same sure. problem? So, you know, um, they, they talk about long-term leases, they talk about fee, um, but uh, you know, it seems to me that um, no matter what, the building is going to deteriorate at a more rapid rate because of this location. I mean, I mean, first of all, there's the salt and the salt water and the corrosion that comes from that. And it may not be only the pipes, you know, it could be other things. You, you still have other plumbing fixtures that, you still have electrical cabling and various other things uh, that are metal and will corrode for the mm -hmm. building. So you know that you're going to have a certain level of corrosion. And uh, by the time you reach year X, whether it's leasehold or fee, you're going to need to ameliorate uh, a lot of things. So it seems to me also that the, that the value of the building, whether it's fee or leasehold, is going to seriously deteriorate before the end of the lease period, and, and uh, it will be very difficult to sell these units, more difficult to sell them as you go on uh, into, into, into the period of, 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 of resilience, uh, outside the period of resilience. And so am I right about that? Because the value won't last. Uh, you're absolutely right about that. And you, know, you mentioned leaseholds. And you know, it's been some time since 
anybody has built a leasehold condominium, mainly because, you know, uh, my group, Hawaii Council of Association of Apartment Owners and others in the 1990s and, you know, in, in, into the 2000s, I mean, we worked on legislation to get rid of leasehold condominiums, uh, you know, to make them fee, mainly because of the inequities that result when you get closer to the end of the lease. And, you know, many, and there are still some leasehold, uh, you know, pockets of leasehold around. And those leases will probably expire by, you know, 2040. At least by 2050, they'll be all gone. And, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know, whenever I hear, and a, a couple of years ago, uh, there was talk in the legislature about, uh, I think it was OHA who was going to put up leasehold condominiums in uh, Kakaka Makai. And we testified against that, mainly because it's why are you creating a problem for future generations? The first 50 years is not a problem. And it, it, yes, I agree. It's probably a, a cheaper source of you know housing because it's leasehold. But after the 50 years, you know, it, there's this declining value. The closer you get to the expiration, the the you know the um, uh, less marketable the, the unit gets, and then within uh, twenty years of the expiration, you can't sell that. You can't sell the unit because your purchaser can't get a mortgage. And I don't know what it's going to uh, what, what you know banking is going to be, uh, you know, fifty years from now. But that's the situation. That that was the situation that was facing lease, uh, you know, lessees who, who had condominiums. They couldn't sell their units. They were worth, they were, they were almost worthless. And it was like, why would you be creating this problem for future generations uh, when we had so many, so it, it took us so long to get rid of the existing situation. Well, you got a decline in value. You got an increase in special assessments while you're having to decline in value. And, um, you know, uh, furthermore, uh, and, you know, it, it seems to me that there's a lot of these condo uh, documents that say when the lease is up, it's the obligation of the individual owners to chip in to remove the building and leave it greenfield again. Um, yes, or to just walk away. And there have been in the last couple of years, in fact, in Waikiki, there were two condominium buildings. One was the Banyan. And, uh, and I know, and and I guess, fortunately, uh, most of the lessees there were not local. I mean, they weren't owner occupants; they were investor owners. So one day you're a lessee, and the next day you, you are you own nothing. Yeah, and, and well, the alternative is, is to yeah. is to write a big check, right, and, and demolish the building. It costs a lot to demolish a building right. and take away the pieces. That is a real problem, especially when it's it's failing. Even yeah. before the end of the leasehold period, right. so the, now, you know, going to the bottom line on this, the this, so there's this this bill in um, the ledge um, where upon OHA seeks to relieve itself of the requirement uh, to, or the, the the restriction on not building um, residential condos, residential anything. Uh, in uh, uh, you know in in Mackay, um, at the same time, um, you have all kinds of issues about developing new new building permit requirements and doing EIS, doing planning for the community, which is really not there. There is no planning. Um, so all these things, and so the question I I put to you is all that we've discussed, you and me. Um, and and the, the problems that you know come out of condos near the water like this, with the water and other environmental, you know, uh, surprises. Well, it's not a surprise. Environmental processes. Um, is it a good time for the legislature to address this, or should this be done after the EIS, where we know the you know the scope of the problem, the scope of the risk, uh, the scope of the changes that will have to be made in in, in 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 building codes and the like. Well, I think you know uh, you bring up a good point. 
I think that, you know, uh, if th these projects are being contemplated, I think it's important that, you know, the uh, that the EIS be done, because especially in Kakakomakai, because you've got the sea level uh, rise and the ocean right there, you know, those issues, they already exist. They already know that there there are some some problems, and you know so I think you know you you need to uh, you know uh, at some point the government's going to have to address the issues and and so you know the developer should do the uh, environmental impact statement uh, you know to to flush out what some of those issues are going to be, and I think you got you need them anyway for the disclosure in the public report that they have to make in 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 order you know to sell these units. And you know that's been a a, a, a big deal re recently, because you know uh, there was that uh, condominium in Kakaako where the maintenance fees, when you know in the public report, seemed to be very very reasonable. And after the units were sold, they went up, and all of a sudden <laughs> the buildings weren't. I mean the the, the uh, affordable units, the, the owners, the people who bought the affordable units, they had to go out and get second and third jobs. In order to keep their units, and and I think they ended up suing the developer, or there was some kind of a lawsuit. But you know that that needs to be addressed in the public report. And I mean, before and before the legislature makes any decisions, right, based on whatever whoever is advocating for the project without the EIS. Because yeah, because you know these you know these um, uh, condominiums. I mean. The biggest purchase that most people have is buying their home. I mean, that's one of the you know major life purchases. And when you you know make that decision and buy this, you know make the investment, it's not like you can change your mind after you buy it. You're kind of stuck with it. And then if you can't afford it, you know, uh, and you can't sell it and recoup your money, you're going to end up with this major loss. And that's why it's so important to have these disclosures made at the front end so that people can have the information to make this very important decision to buy a home. And you, know, you can't be having these situations where after they buy it, they find out that it's not such a good deal. Because yeah, that, would, and that would apply to people who would um, happily uh, got it at an affordable price, uh, if there is an affordable price for a project like this one, um, and um, and it would still be a very high price. And, and you know, if you have if you have these special assessments, um, everybody pays the same special assessment. In other words, the people who got into the uh, building. Uh, for an affordable quote affordable price, they pay the same assessment as everybody else, right? Yes, and, they have to. and the and the people who got into the building on affordable, they have no benefit uh, over the other owners because the building is failing for everybody at the same time. Right. So my question to you is: uh, Native Hawaiians, as a group, uh, are you know that you just it doesn't seem appropriate that Native Hawaiians would. Would, would occupy this building at all because it's on the shoreline. It's a you know property that is the most valuable property maybe in, in Honolulu, but because of that, uh, how can they afford, you know, I've asked a few of them, how can how can they afford four or five million dollars or whatever uh, would be charged for these condos? And and how can they afford these special assessments? And how can the developer um, treat this as feasible? Uh, and you know, cover the cost of quote affordability end quote, which may not be very affordable at all, uh, given these special unknown expenses that will have to be incurred in doing the EIS and in doing any remediation that is necessary. Well, doing the remediation that is necessary, because you know there will have to be some. I mean, does this sound feasible to you? Does it sound feasible for the say to the Native Hawaiian buyer who may not have that much money? Uh, does it sound feasible for you, for the developer who uh, who doesn't actually know what what to expect? Like you know, given the, the the cost of building, and you know, we all know that it's 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 a lot more expensive now. You know, uh, because of 
some supply chain problems. And, you know, those of us, you know, who live in condos and try, are trying to get, you know, uh, uh, proposals, we know that it's a lot more expensive to do repairs now than it was before the pandemic. A lot more expensive because of supply chain issues, inflation, and, you know, other factors that have nothing to do with the condominiums, right? It's just more expensive. And, um, and you know, so if you're, you're going to put something out there, you know, where, you know, where the land is, 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 is very valuable to begin with. I mean, I don't know how you can, can, can a developer uh, can build so that the units would be available uh, to, for affordable housing. I mean, it just seems, uh, what do you call it? Contradictory, you know, affordable housing on 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 uh, in in on the uh, Kakakomakai, you know, where where you know you know by right by the ocean. It just seems that you know it, 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 that just is not going to happen. Oha doesn't actually need to build a high rise condo here. There are other things it could do, right? Yes, and and, and they have a very, many worthwhile programs educational training programs and they they can build a building to you know pro, to to so that they can you know uh implement you know their their programs in these buildings you know they, they don't have to build a high rise um i i don't know you know uh why they would want to build a high rise and, and and deal with all the development and environmental issues uh you know because they could use that you know uh, that land uh, to to uh, you know implement some of the programs that they have, and they have very worthwhile programs that would provide educational and vocational uh, you know uh, resources uh, to the Native Hawaiian community, and I think that's what they should be concentrating on. You know, if, if they've got this land and they've got the money, uh, that's what they should be doing, it because that's going to improve the uh, you know the 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 livelihood and you know the future you know for for this group of people well thank you jane jane sugimura condom, condominium governance lawyer for many decades thank you so much for joining us and uh, answering these important questions aloha okay thank you for having me Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.